Well, hi there. I'm here with Gus Gus because we want to talk to you about what a reptile is. And honestly, what's a reptile might seem like a very easy question. But what is a reptile? Modern day reptiles include things like lizards, snakes, turtles, crocodilians, and birds. You heard me right. Birds are reptiles. People often ask me things like if frogs and toads and salamanders are reptiles, but they aren't. So what is a reptile? Let's start with the things people often think make a reptile a reptile and see which of these actually pertain to reptiles as a group. So one of the first things people often mention is that reptiles are cold blooded. And that is really a bit of a misnomer. Cold blood I mean, what, what makes blood cold? You, as a human, keep your blood about 98.6 degrees. But I know a lot of lizards that like to bask in a basking spot a lot hotter than that and can get their body temperature way over 100, up to like 110, maybe even 120 degrees Fahrenheit. You die at these temperatures, just for the record. That is hot blood. But what people are usually referring to is what's called ectothermy, which just means they get their heat, their thermy, their heat from outside sources, generally from the sun. That's different from, say, humans, which are endothermic. I mean, we get a little bit of heat from the sun, but most of the, the energy that you use to keep your body at 98.6 degrees actually comes from the food that you eat, whereas reptiles, generally speaking, generate very little heat in this way. Like I said, most reptiles are ectothermic. They get their heat from outside, but most animals are ectothermic. In fact, pretty much all animals except for mammals and birds. But birds, one of the few endotherms in the whole world, are reptiles. Gus Gus here, being an Argentine black and white tegu, is actually also a partially endothermic species. They don't do it all the time. Most of the time they get their heat from the sun, but during specific times of year, they can use energy from food to warm their body up even before the sun comes up for the day. So they do have endothermy. Another example of this would be pythons, like this ball python, also show endothermy at specific times during their life. Specifically, the females, after they lay their eggs, they actually coil around the eggs and they stay there with them until they hatch. And all that time they'll help keep those eggs the right temperature by shivering. And that shivering uses energy from food that the snake ate before she ever laid her eggs, turns that energy into heat to keep the eggs warm and that's also endothermy. So obviously, not all reptiles are ectothermic. Not all endotherms are reptiles and not all reptiles are ectotherms. So it's probably not the best thing to use to decide what is a reptile. Another thing people often say is that reptiles are slimy. And these people have either never touched a reptile or they pulled it out of some slime. Because reptiles, unlike mammals actually, don't have any glands in their skin, which means they can't make any kind of slime. Their skin is totally dry. The inability to make slime is actually something that all reptiles have in common. The next thing that people often say is that reptiles lay eggs. It is true that many reptiles lay eggs. We already mentioned that pythons, like this ball python, lay eggs, but many do not. Like this boa, for example. Most boas give live birth, as do a lot of other snakes such as rattlesnakes, garter snakes, and then lizards too, like blue tongue skinks. As it turns out, about 30% of all snakes give live birth and about 15% of all lizards. So that's a pretty significant number. All crocodilians, turtles, and birds do lay eggs, but there are a heck of a lot of reptiles that don't. And there are some mammals that lay eggs. You may be aware of animals like the duck-billed platypus or maybe the echidna. These are monotremes. And the monotremes are mammals, but they lay eggs. Another thing that people often associate with reptiles are scales. And it is true that reptiles have scales. They've got scaly skin. And this is almost universally true. Even birds have scales. If you look on the feet, 
of this chicken, for example, you're going to see a bunch of scales. And as it turns out, even feathers are just modified scales. Silkback bearded dragons and scaleless ball pythons, which this is not one, but they do exist, do show that scales can be lost actually pretty quickly. So most reptiles have scales but it is possible to have an individual or even a whole species that doesn't. Also, you've noticed probably that fish have scales. They are different in structure, but it is clear that reptiles aren't the only animals on the planet with scales. Reptiles have diapsid skulls, which might be something you've never heard about before. So let me explain. A diapsid skull is a skull that has on each side of it two holes behind the eye for muscles to pass through. And it is true that the ancestor of all living reptiles had a diapsid skull. However, these holes can be lost. For example, lizards have lost the bottom of one of these holes, opening it up, essentially. In snakes, they, they have a kinetic skull, a really flexible skull, and those holes are basically impossible to identify because their whole skull is basically full of holes. In turtles, the back part of both of these holes has been lost, leaving both of them kind of wide open, so you could make an argument that they don't have any holes at all, even though they, they totally do. And it's been so restructured in birds that there are no identifiable holes there at all. So a lot of living reptiles don't have a diapsid skull like this, but their ancestor certainly did. Therefore, if it has a diapsid skull, reptiles are the only ones that have that. So it's definitely a reptile if it has a diapsid skull, but if it doesn't have one, it still could be a reptile. The one thing that truly unifies all living reptiles is they do share a more recent common ancestor with all of the other reptiles than they do with any other animals on Earth. And that truly is the thing that unifies them as a group. They are more closely related to one another than they are to any other living thing. This is why birds must be included in this group. Birds are the only living descendants of the dinosaurs. Crocodilians are more closely related to dinosaurs, and therefore birds, than they are to any other living group of reptiles. Except maybe the turtles. We really don't know where they go. You can't make a reptile group with crocodilians, lizards, snakes, and turtles without including the birds. Because they're reptiles. And interestingly, reptiles share a more recent common ancestor with mammals like you than they do with amphibians like frogs and toads and salamanders. So those things are not reptiles. If they were, you'd be a reptile too. So to reiterate, reptiles share a more recent common ancestor with all of the other reptiles than they do with any other living thing. They are the descendants of animals with diapsid skulls, and many of them still have them. They generally have scales. They may or may not lay eggs. They don't produce any slime. They may or may not be ectothermic, cold-blooded. And now you know. As always, like and subscribe. Let us know if this is the kind of thing you'd like to see from us in the future. We would love to share all kinds of cool facts about reptiles if that's the kind of thing you'd like to see. So please, let us know down in the comments. Make sure and click the little bell so you'll know when all of our future videos come out. And we hope to see you real soon. And come again. We hope to see you real soon. Dang it! Snakes. And snakes. Also snakes. Snakes! And turtles. And if you're frustrated by the fact that I'm holding a tortoise, we got a whole video for you to watch. Turtle, turtle. Thanks, Udini. Sir Gusherton, why are you so good at everything? It's really bright. I know, I'm trying to. She's she good. just pooped. It's too bright. Um, what is it, the family or? Oh. Well, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I wish, I wish we got Will's reaction for that one. You're a good dinosaur. Good punch. Come here. Toes back. Okay, good. Dinosaur fans. Sorry, fan. Birds are reptiles. And fans.